Hello and welcome to Start Over Coffee. My name is Shaquilla Smith and I lead our community here at Start. Um, Start Over Coffee is all about having conversations with creators in the Salt Lake City area. And today we'll be interviewing Eric Jara, who is the CEO and co-founder of Indicive Streetwear. Indicive Streetwear is a clothing brand built by artists, created for artists, and today we'll be discussing with Eric his journey as an entrepreneur, how he's overcome adversity, and how he is building Indicive Streetwear. So, hi Eric, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, how are you? Good. I'm doing well. I am super excited to have you on the podcast and kind of just talking about your story and who you are and um, your passion as an entrepreneur. So, I'm really uh, excited. Um Starting the podcast off, I would like to just um, have you tell the audience and whoever's listening um, a little bit about yourself and um, what you're doing um, right now. For sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I love sharing my story. I'm a huge talker, so I appreciate uh, I appreciate you taking the time, you know, to like uh, put me on. Um, I am Eric Jara. And I have like four other different names that I go by, depending on what form of entertainment you know me by. Um, but I'm pretty much a young Mexican student, entrepreneur, uh, son, brother, hopefully everybody's best homie that'll always be there to support them. Um, yeah, I was born here in the U.S., uh, but my parents are from Mexico. So if anybody asks, like, I'll say, you know, I'm Mexican. That's where I'm from. I value my culture heavily. Uh, and the hard work that, you know, my parents and like my grandparents, they all had to put in to like get me to where I'm at right now. So I appreciate that heavy. I'm always going to say, you know, I'm that young Mexican guy, like, you know, doing stuff. Um, but yeah, I, that's, that's a good, you know, a decent, like, you know, overview of who I am. That's awesome. I think a lot that says a lot about you, just kind of where you come from. And um, I don't know, I think being an immigrant, <clears throat> of any country um, really does give you perspective. <clears throat> and you really have to work hard, you know? You really start to realize, and then you realize like me, I'm a first generation too. It's like you realize your parents or your grandparents, how hard they work to get here <laughs> and to make a living and um, all the opportunities that there is in America. Like, it's pretty crazy. Like, we're no, very for real, it's there. huge. Like, my parents, like, they didn't, none of them went to, like, what would be the equivalent of junior high here in the U.S. So, like, they didn't go to school. They didn't really, like, know anything. Just like, hey, we heard that there's opportunities up in the U.S. and we can send money back home to our parents. And they, like, pretty much built a life not knowing, like, the culture, the country, the language, like, nothing. They're just like, all right, we got to start from scratch. We'll start from scratch, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And just to see, like, you know, where they're at right now, like, you know, and they've been able to raise me. I mean, I, I'm not the best, you know, example, but, um, you know, I'm out here in college and I'm blessed to be here. Uh, like I said, an entrepreneur, also building businesses and yeah. you know, I'm blessed to be here. So it's, it's all because of them and I appreciate it so much. So I love that. Um, so kind of how did you start as an entrepreneur? And I guess that could, that's part of your story, but what really inspires you to be that? Honestly, um, I was thinking about that recently, too, because uh, they invited me to do a presentation at a high school and they said, hey, uh, why are you studying business or like, why are you an entrepreneur? Why are you doing all this stuff? And I was like, honestly, I don't really know <laughs> what started um, what started this whole like entrepreneurial thought process uh, was my senior year in high school when my homie was encouraging me to go to college. OK, uh, shout out to my brother, Ivan. He was the first one in the family that we knew of that actually graduated high school and didn't go work with their dad or their uncle, or like, you know, whatever. He was the different one. He said, you know what? I'm going to go to college. So senior year, uh, when I was a senior in high school, he kind of put that spark in my head. He was like, hey, you should try and go to college. Like, you should see what else there is in life, you know? And I was like, uh, I bet for sure. You know, I'll look into it, just kind of like ignoring him a little bit. But every day since he told me that he would send me a message every morning and it had like one of those, I'm pretty sure people have seen them all the time on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like those motivational pictures. I like just those pictures like a successful looking background and it has like rise and grind or like, you know, stuff like that. So he would send me one of those every single morning just to get me hyped on like school. He was like, bro, you're putting in work in school, in school, like go ham, go, go, go harder, go harder. And 
it just so happened that most of the accounts where these pictures come from are entrepreneurs. The mindset that it takes to be an entrepreneur that like, you know, hustle all the time, you know, your attitude is your greatest asset, like that type of stuff. I picked that up, but I didn't know that it was these entrepreneurial accounts, um, you know, that really believe this stuff that really heavy on attitude, on grind, on hustle and all this stuff. Once I started looking into it and I was like, oh snap, it's these entrepreneurs that have these really dope mindset. And I've kind of adopted that because my cousin over here keeps spamming my phone with like all of these pictures. And I was like, okay, maybe entrepreneurship sounds really dope because I really like the mindset of doesn't matter what's in front of me. I'm going to get past it and I'm going to keep going. And I have a reason why. And I have the hustle, even though I might not have the smarts because trust me, I was not the best student in high school. Uh, But it was that attitude that like, you know, even if I don't have the smarts, uh, you know, I'll figure it out. I'll find a way. I'll ask questions. You know, I'll work until I can understand it. So I'm, I think that's where the whole entrepreneurial stuff started. And it was like a mindset type thing. It wasn't like, um, oh, I want to go start a business. It was like, no, it was more of an attitude thing that I'm like, I really like hustling. I really like, um, you know, because going back to, you know, my parents being immigrants, it's like they had to do the exact same thing to get to where they're at right now. So um, that attitude adopted you know I picked it up senior year of high school and then in college once I started surrounding myself uh with a lot of business folks and a lot of similarly minded people uh that's when I was like okay you know what let's do something with this mindset you know it's like it's not just about having that mindset about being able to just overcome whatever's in front of you but actually doing something big and making history with that so um yeah that's when it all kind of just kind of fell forward and I was like all right you know what let's start doing this stuff. And then I built the first business. It was a nonprofit. Um, And then I just kept going from there. I was like, all right, what's new? What's next? Like, yeah, this mindset has been dope, but like, what can I do with it? How can I make history with it? So that's pretty much where it started though. It was like my cousin who was telling me all that stuff. Yeah. I love that. I think a lot of, I mean, I think the core of entrepreneurship is the mindset. And I agree. Like you, I think um, it seems almost, I would say commonsensical to think that way, but it's not like a lot of it is action based. You know, you could say a lot, but it's, it's actually doing it. Um, but I love that. I love that story. Um, that's really cool. What are, what are some of the trials as an early entrepreneur? What have you faced and how you overcame that? Um, I think the biggest thing when I was starting uh, is not having enough of anything, um, which is kind of like maybe stupid in my sense. A lot of people would consider it stupid. I didn't have enough money. I didn't have enough time. I didn't have enough resources. I didn't have enough knowledge. Like there was no way like it could happen. Right. But I kind of took that as a challenge. Like, all right, there's not enough. There never will be enough. (laughs) So might as well just start. So first thing uh, is not having enough of anything. Um, I started a nonprofit scholarship my freshman year in college, uh, which is, again, also something that people might consider super stupid. But I did. Um, I was blessed uh, to start at the University of Utah uh, with a bunch of amazing scholarships and support systems that kind of helped me get through it all. And I didn't have to worry about, uh, you know, how to pay for school. So that to me was a huge blessing. I'm like, I want to give back. I want to pay it forward in a way, uh, you know, to thank those who helped me get to where I'm at right now. And it was just my first year in college. I didn't know anything. (laughs) You know, I just barely picked up this entrepreneurial mindset, but I never really did anything in my life before. But I was like, you know what? Run it. I'm going to go for it. So I asked a bunch of questions. Uh, Anybody that I could get in contact, I was like, hey, do you know how to start a business? Hey, do you know how to start a nonprofit? Hey, do you know what legally I need to set up? And like, all of this stuff, trying to figure out what it is that I actually needed to do. Like the money part, I'll figure it out later. That one, I'm not tripping too hard about it because worst comes to worst. Like I can just work in construction over the summer, just like I have, you know, in high school and stuff. And yeah, it's hard work and it's like, you know, painful, but the money's good. I'm like, I'll be able to, you know, maybe help one student with a thousand dollar scholarship or something. And we can start from there. You know, so I wasn't tripping too heavy on the money. I was just like, legally, how can I make this happen? You know, 
so I asked a few of the folks that I had met up at the University of Utah, and they all were like really, really supportive, uh, which was crazy to me because I'd never seen that type of stuff before. Uh, like I said, first year in college, right? I, it was a completely different ball game going up from like West Valley in high school and then going up to Salt Lake, you know, like the University of Utah was, it was insane. All of these people wanted to help me and they connected me with the person in charge of scholarships at the David Echo School of Business at the University of Utah. And she just kind of went through it. She was like, well, this is kind of how it works. This is what you need to do. You need to set up this, you need to set up that. You need to talk to a lawyer, you need to do that. And I was like, I bet, let's go. Like I was overwhelmed, but at the same time I was hyped. I'm like, all right, someone's giving me like a blueprint saying, hey, step-by-step, step, this is what you need to do. So boom, I went at it. Um, reached out to everybody that I could, literally like everybody that I knew and their families and their friends, like just trying to understand like, yo, how can I make this happen? I need a lawyer. Who do I need to talk to? Hey, do you know a lawyer? Hey, do you know a lawyer? Hey, do you know a lawyer? Hey, do you know? And I just kept going. Cause I'm like, I don't know nothing, but I'm not scared to ask questions and I'm not scared to wear cars. So I'm like, let's yeah. go. So it did that. It took me about two months to finally get it up and running. Um, got connected with uh, these amazing lawyers, uh, you know, shout out to them. Cause, oh my gosh, like they helped me out so much. And it was, like I said, through one of those connections that it just kind of, you know, they connected me with them. They're like, Hey, these guys are really nice folks. Um, Y'all should go with them. And so I did. And so we established a nonprofit, uh, 501c3. It's like, you know, legally registered and everything. So everything was good on that end. Um, but then came the money part. <laughs> so part one of, you know, my first uh, business venture, I guess, uh, was the legal stuff. Finally figured that stuff out after a bunch of questions. And then the money part. Um, I was blessed to have gotten an internship during the summer after my freshman year. And it was a sales internship. Uh, so, you know, there was just like, Hey, it's on commission. So go at it. Like as much money as you want to make this summer, that's on you. And I was like, all right, let's go ham. Like, you know, let's try to make as much money as I can. That way I can give that back to the scholarship. Cause I'm still on a, uh, you know, on my own scholarship. So paying for me to go to school. So I don't have to worry about that stuff. You know, all the money that I made during the summer bills and helping other people go to school too. So I did that. And I ended up in debt by eight grand. So boom, I spent my whole summer out here grinding. <laughs> I come back home because um, this was in Texas. So I was doing my internship in Texas. I come back home, boom, I'm eight grand in debt. I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm going to do. We just keep going, I guess. So I was tripping about it for probably like a week or two. Uh, and then after that, I'm just like, well, I can feel sorry for myself or I could just keep going. Uh, so I told my dad, I'm like, Hey, do you have any side jobs, anything I can do like before school starts? Because I need money. <laughs> um, I, I want to give out a scholarship this year, uh, well, the following, like, you know, school year. Um, what can I do? How can you help me? And he's like, I bet we'll get you, we'll get you working. Like, <laughs> I'm not giving you money. Like, I don't have any to like give you, but I'll, I'll get you working and I'll get you a job. And so I was working with my dad for a bit and I'm blessed. I was able to help out three students uh, that first year, each with a thousand dollars for that, for that school year. So it was like, That's you know, amazing. a bunch of stuff that was, everything was pretty much against me. They were like, Hey, you don't have enough money. You don't know anything, but you know, it's just, I trial and error. Like, you know, if I couldn't figure it out, I went, um, you know, during the summer to Texas and I got in debt and I came back and I was still able to do that and, you know, still trying to pay off my debts and stuff, but still creating that change that I want to see. Cause I'm like, well, I know I'm never going to have enough of all of that. So I'm just yeah. might as well run it. So that was the very first thing I ever did. And I would say it was like the first of like my, you know, trials as an entrepreneur to see how badly I really wanted to do something because I could have easily given that up and been like, you know what, Never mind. This is too hard. This is too much. Like, I don't understand that. Then I don't have enough money. Like, you know, might as well not do it. But it was my first trial to see, hey, do you really want to do something like or are you just all talk just like everybody on social media, you know? So, yeah, I think it says a lot about your character, too, in that um, your first business was, you know, for scholarship money for another person. Um, I think that's amazing. I love that. Um, I also think a lot 
you know, has to like you saying you're not afraid to ask and finding the right people. And a lot of it is that, right? Like being an entrepreneur is like not being afraid to talk to other people. (laughs) Because it could be scary. I mean, like, especially you have, you start from somewhere. Like everyone started from somewhere. Um, Humble beginnings, they call it, you know? And um, I think that's a huge, I don't know. That's an amazing story. I love that. Um, I think that's a huge achievement on your end but it just shows so much about who you are I love that um thank you yeah of course but tell us a little bit about your current entrepreneur um endeavors you're working on right now uh so right now um I have a few things going on which is awesome uh like I said from learning from that scholarship the very first thing I'm like all right what else can I do um so with the scholarship I'm still working on that right now so trying to get more funding more donors more people to help us out so we can make more change in our community um I also have an entertainment company where we do cover arts for like music releases uh music videos and that's about it honestly uh for that because then we have a separate uh company that's like a record label and that's where we put out the music and like you know everything goes through there um my I have a a contractor business as well uh, for construction because you know growing up in that kind of area like me my dad my uncles and stuff I wanted to make a change there as well with the way like you know people get treated especially the employees who are actually out there doing all of that hard stuff so that's another thing that I'm doing and then lastly the thing that I'm I think that like I'm most excited and like hyped about is a streetwear brand um, (laughs) that I'm always repping uh, because I love the stuff that we're doing um yeah indicive streetwear uh is a company that we started just this past year in 2020 uh which is you know probably the worst time to start a company but i said you know what now i got time uh you know everything's online everything's at home so i was like might as well just try something you know so um yeah indicive streetwear uh we're also working on that trying to see how far we can take it Uh, We're trying to compete with the likes of Supreme and like, you know, all those designer brands that a lot of people see in music videos and stuff like that, just because, again, that's kind of like, you know, where I come from, the rap, hip hop background and stuff. Um, Trying to compete with them. We just recently released, just like three months ago, uh, we recently released uh, really cool, two really cool jackets that are being sold out in Europe. So we've gone international in just the first year. So we're blessed to, you know, be where we at to have the support and love from all the people around the world. Um, but now we're moving to trying to be helpful to other artists because in Dicev, we had this vision of having streetwear designed specifically for artists of all disciplines. Because being an artist, you need to be both creative and you need to hustle hard because creating art is one thing, selling it so that you can live off your art, that's a completely different monster. So we're trying to see how we can help, how we can be like, you know, how our platform, like, you know, our followers and the things that we have going on can help out other artists as well. Um, yeah, we're still trying to see what we can do there. The idea is to start a podcast where we interview folks who have already quote unquote made it as far as like artists goes of all disciplines, uh, you know, to share information with like the other folks who like, I don't know, maybe there's a super famous dancer that we can get a hold of be like, hey, how did you make it in the world of dance, uh, you know, to teach all of the people who follow us, who love our the stuff that Indicive is doing, who love dance and also trying to make it, you know, so they can learn from that person as well. Um, not just dance, like painting, cooking, entrepreneurship, because there's an art to that as well. I believe that yeah. heavily. Um, you know, all disciplines of art, we're trying to get as many people as we can to share their stories because I, I for one, believe in the power of storytelling. Like that could be super inspiring, super awesome. So uh, we're trying to move in that direction, you know, to be helpful, not just, you know, to try and sell like, you know, the best streetwear ever, um, but also, you know, to help out the artists that we think, you know, are out here putting in that grind to create and sell their art. I love that. So are you collaborating with artists in the area just to create um, designs on your shirts? Is that kind of the way that yeah. you're doing it? Yeah, that's not how it started. 
um it started with just me trying to learn photoshop and illustrator and trying to like you know create some stuff just on my own yeah um so that was our trial run like way back when we first started but our most recent um if you go if anybody goes on indicive.com the most recent stuff like everything on there uh is completely new where we did a collab with laura parra shout out to her also from uh utah for more of like the Taylorsville area uh but she's had art in like museums and stuff like paintings and all this murals like she's done amazing work uh on shoes and stuff like she's she's just awesome um got connected with her during the summer and I was like hey uh I want to do something different with the streetwear brand that I'm creating right it's streetwear for artists so it only makes sense to partner with an artist to make you know better designs make something look you know, way better than what we had originally, especially because, you know, me just learning uh, Photoshop and Illustrator on my own, like, you know, just barely starting. I'm like, all right, I know that I can't design anything like really well, but I know you've done some amazing stuff. So let's work together. And uh, she was down for it. And I'm blessed that she was down for it because everything that we have right now, like it's to me is insane. Like not just the designs like that, just the idea that came with it. Like, it's just, crazy yeah Um, I think a lot I mean with companies there needs to be some sort of culture and I think that you've built and you're building a culture that first of all it was something that start and like myself personally like believe in is like supporting artists and um collaborating with other people and creating a community but I love that you're about supporting local artists like that is a huge thing that is cool no definitely it was cool like I didn't so we were like working on some stuff talking about it she was like hey this design here this design there I want shirts I want hoodies I want sweatshirts like all of this stuff but once we actually launched it um shout out again to Laura Parra she's amazing she was like that's crazy I have like you know like my art is international like it's on streetwear and all this stuff and I was like Yes, that's the point. You know, I wanted to help you do this because like, yeah, we've already have, you know, the platform to sell the clothing and stuff, but there's more to that. You know, we have her story, a little bit of her story on the website and everything that we've like promoted as far as the clothing goes, always tags her, tags her as like, hey, this is the amazing person who made this happen because if it weren't for her, the designs would still be on some Eric Jara old, like super crappy (laughs) stuff. So no, yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. And she's, she's, she's awesome. So what was the original story of Indicive Streetwear? Like, how did it all start before all of this? Yeah, Um, it was honestly just an idea. So me and my two brothers, shout out uh, Ivan and Jesus Mesa. uh, We started rapping. We started like uh, making music, you know, hip hop rap type music. I think it was like five or six years ago now. But during the summer, we were thinking about, you know, going the next level. It's like, yeah, we put out music, but now let's do videos. It's like, okay, cool. What are we going to wear in the videos? And we were like, um, shoot, I don't know. <laughs> They're like, we don't know what we're going to wear. Everybody wears all these Supreme and like Gucci, all these designer stuff, you know, but you know what would be really cool? If we had our own brand that we could wear and like rock in our videos. And it was like, yeah, that would be cool whatever okay the next day uh i'm like yo we said it but like i am super down to like go ham and like you know figure this stuff out and start our own streetwear brand we're like all right man you know whatever it was kind of like eh eh um but then i went at it i was like okay i need to find people i need to find help i need to find a supplier i need to find clothes i need to find designers like all of that stuff eventually couldn't find like you know everybody so i started doing a bunch of stuff myself um but you know a week later I come back to Ivan and Jesus and I was like um look we have a website uh it's gonna be all online because obviously because of COVID we can't have no store or anything like that yet but let's start let's do something you know let's figure it out and we were all hyped we were like all right let's go what's this gonna mean what's this gonna be for like you know we it can't just be for us now and it was like, okay, so what else should it be for? Like, you know, we started this with the idea that like, you know, we could wear it in our music videos and we could rep something that we created, but then what do we, what else do we want to do with it? So that's when we started talking more about what the brand wanted, what we wanted the brand to mean, uh, what we wanted to do with it, where we wanted to go. 
And it went from an idea of, I want to wear this in my music video to how can we get the best streetwear for artists who are just like us, who have to learn, not just, you know, we can't just be creative with the art itself. We also have to understand business so we can sell it and eventually live off of, you know, the stuff that we love to do. Yeah. So we're like, all right, there's a certain hustle. There's a certain thing that I feel like all artists across all disciplines kind of understand um, where you can't just have the product. You know, you can't just have the art itself. You also have to figure out a way to sell it. Yeah. So yeah. that's where we're at. That's amazing. What's your vision for the brand? Because I know you now you're a little bit international and um, you're growing. Um and you're in Salt Lake right now, but are you wanting to be in different states? Like, what does that look like to you? Um, I hope to have uh, an actual store because right now everything we're doing, we're conducting online, mm-hmm. um, right? You know, we have uh, our supplier has fact has uh, warehouses in like different places. So, you know, it's easy to get things to people super quick. Um, is just building the name of the brand to be something more special uh, so that people understand it because you can't go to the mall to look up something in Dicev, you know, to try to buy it because we don't have a store, like, you know, an in-person place for you to do that yet. So the goal, hopefully, if this whole Corona stuff uh, gets a lot (laughs) better, um, is to start having uh, stores um, wherever we can put them, wherever we found that like people like our stuff a lot more, uh, which is crazy too, like running ads uh, online. We found that like the people who actually really loved our stuff, there was a lot more people in New York than there was in Utah. So if we ever did something, you know, the first place we'd probably go would be New York. Um, But, you know, because I, I love West Valley, I love where I'm at, I would also love to have a store, you know, here in my hometown, even if it's not as you know, big or whatever, but I would love to have one here. Um, The goal is, so right now we've sold uh, in the U.S., in Mexico, and in a few countries in Europe. Uh, The goal is to reach every other country as well. Um, I I think I really want to have Indicive be in Japan because of the streetwear culture uh, there in Japan. I've been doing a lot of research on like streetwear and stuff and New York, uh England and Japan is like where all of this streetwear mm-hmm. looks you know kind of started with like hip-hop music and skater culture and all of that stuff um so I definitely want to be in Japan uh hopefully by the end of this next year um you know have a have a decent um what would you call it like uh that people know that you know in Daisub is a thing like you know have a decent audience out in Japan as well I think that's that's what we're trying to head we love that. Um, I think you could do it. Like I could, I could see you doing it. I think you're going to do it. I know you're going to do it. Thank you. I appreciate you're gonna that. You're going to do it. I, um, your passion is just remarkable. <laughs> um, and starting a business in 2020 is huge. So like props to you. Um, what like made you kind of keep moving during the difficult times? Like what's the passion behind it? Cause I know you're, you're just, you're doing so many things, but what like really keeps you going? The idea that I will die one day <laughs> is legit yeah. what keeps me going. <laughs> um, when I was 12 years old, um, uh, my mom was pregnant for the third time. So it goes me, I'm the oldest, and then my sister. And then at the time it was my little brother, Freddie. Okay. So I was 12 years old when Freddie was born. Uh, Freddie was born with a heart problem that the doctors had already, like, you know, we saw coming and everything. And they were like, hey, um, there's like a certain valve or like, you know, a certain part of his heart uh, that didn't grow as well as it should have. So he's going to need surgery uh, a week after he's born. And then again, after three months, six months, a year, three years, five. And he would just be, you know, constant surgeries all the time. Um, And so he was born. Uh, I was 12 years old, Uh, you know, I was in sixth grade, I was still in elementary school. Uh, He was born a week later, he had his first surgery, a week and a half later, he passed away. And so here I am at 12 years old, instead of thinking about like recess and like, you know, my friends at school and all of that stuff, I'm thinking, what would happen if I'm not here tomorrow? 
So from then on, I've always carried uh, my little brother, Freddie, with me, um, saying that if he was here, what would he do? He didn't get the chance of life, and I do, so I'm going to live it as if it was him. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, is my biggest motivator to keep me going, thinking about, look, I know I'm not going to be here forever. I want my story to be told. I want to make a difference. And if I can't, quote unquote, make it, maybe my hustle will inspire somebody else who will actually make it, you know, and either either way, like I'll be fulfilled. So yeah. that's what keeps me going, really, just the idea that I know I'm not going to be here forever. I, I have to make history today and I have to, like, you know, do it in the best way that I can to inspire others, to help others um, in a way that actually is like something huge so that even after I die, my story's still being told. Yeah, that's a beautiful way to live. And what an incredible story. I am um, those, I think, tragic moments, you know, personally that you go through um, really do shape who you are and your outlook on life and how you live your every day. Um, I'm so sorry about your loss, first of all, <laughs> um, because that is very terrible. Um, but man, it's um, incredible when you switch your mindset to say, and to say and to think like, hey, like I can make a difference and what I do makes a difference every day. Like whoever I talk to makes a difference. Like I think developing that mindset is really big because, um, and it, the huge words empathy too, right? Cause it means you're empathetic to other people's lives, um, the way you live yours. Um, so that is amazing. Um, kind of just, you're so inspiring. What is just some advice you would give to other entrepreneurs out there? or anybody listening um, who are wanting to start or that are in like the everyday hustle right now and grind, like what's your advice? Um, I think one of the things that has helped me uh, keep going is to understand that life isn't all sunshine and rainbows and it'll never be all sunshine and rainbows. My greatest advice is to live with the ups and downs and appreciate when you're up and appreciate when you're down because if it wasn't like that you wouldn't appreciate any of it right and it's it might not be you know the most uplifting inspiring thing to say but it's the realest thing that I can say um considering my experiences like life is always going to do this and you're never going to get to a point where you're completely satisfied completely happy with like anything that you've done um at least I have never been uh, and so if that's the same type of person, you know, listening to this right now, I'm like, just appreciate that it's always going to go up and down. Keep going, keep working. Don't let that stop you. But acknowledge that, yes, you're going to have like your great moments and then you're going to have your learning moments. But you need those learning moments so you can get to the next great moment. So just keep going. Like, I know it's hard and it'll always be hard. It doesn't get easier. It doesn't get better. Um, but, you know, if it's something that you really care about just keep going. Enjoy the ups and downs. And also remember to be disciplined because a lot of people say, oh, how do you stay so motivated? It's like, well, motivation is a feeling <laughs> and those are never permanent. Yeah. So I prefer to say, remember to stay disciplined. That way, whether you feel like working or not, just do it. Just keep going. Keep at it. It will pay off eventually. Um, and accept that life isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Just take the ups and downs as they go. And, you know, if you're at an all-time high, enjoy it because it won't last forever. And if you're an all-time low, enjoy it because it won't last forever either and you're <laughs> headed up again. So, yeah, that's my biggest my biggest piece of advice. I love it. Um, I feel like I needed to hear that today. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Um, For sure. And yeah, I'm so excited that you were on here on the podcast and taking the time today. So thank you so much, Eric. Thank you for having me. I thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, of course. We'll talk soon. For sure. Okay. If you'd like to learn more about Indicative Streetwear, visit Indicative.com. If you'd like to learn more about Start, visit SCRT.com.